guys, since I got, I'm in the middle of a couple projects today, um, and I thought it's just, it just doesn't seem right to, to start working in the shop uh, without doing a railroad spike knife. So we're going to do a simple knife, nothing crazy, okay? Uh, just for tradition, all right? While that thing's annealing. Actually, I'm going to let you do that. We're going to do this real time, all right? Just let the camera roll. I just put the thing in the fire. And, uh, I don't know if I've ever done one real time. Start to finish all the heats, etc. My uh, uh, fire is doing okay. It's a little bit temperamental at the moment. But we'll see what's going on. I got a, a big piece over here that's kneeling. This is real time, railroad spike, simple knife with. Uh, Let's do a pineapple twist. Sometimes 
Spaniards. See is the bell grinder. I'll have to change the angle, but you're there. Hey, you got the horse. side full twist. that chisel and part of the glove will be on top like that can you see I can't see what you can see and then it's like well I'm not wasting any time and I hit that sucker and that 
rips that top seam and before you know it, that's what you got. It sucks. And you look at it. That's how I ruin a lot of gloves. But I'm telling you, a lot of you guys don't forge with gloves. But having that extra heat shield, not so much to touch hot stuff, but just so your hand is shielded from the heat. Really? That's a good job for me. Good. I just like to put a little curve in my handles like that. I don't know why, but I do. All right, now it's blade time. Oh, 
but Edward, use that. No, I don't know what's around here. I'm afraid of this plate tank, but we're we'll about to find out what it does. I think it's a little more deep. Ten seconds here, here's me another. 30 seconds, I mean. To about the thickness that I want. We picked up some good length, that's good. And I will start doing a little more off on that thing, I guess. And then we'll start pulling the tape on it.
Nazis on my railroad spike knife because I usually grind that kind of like finger groove behind the blade. But I still like to drop a little bit because if I do, I'm able to pull that blade where that finger groove is out a little deeper. Otherwise, you end up with the, you know, it comes from the point, looks good, and then you get that little round off at the end before the handle. What the hell the line out? That's what happens to me. That's how it happens to me, I'll tell you. So I like to find out where it's going to be. So, I mean, it's, we're getting 
down to a decent thickness. A little thick maybe still, but I'm not done yet. I do like a little bit of a curve, just a small curve on the blade too. So we have plenty of meat to do that. We'll throw that in and then we'll come back for the final. Now you notice a lot of people will curve their blades in the opposite direction and then start babbling because it's going to pull that blade up. I'm not sure why mine don't do that badly. It's got to be something with what I'm doing with the hammer. I do fix it and correct it a few times, but I'm not sure. So again, I'm just going to put that curve in now. So now we're just going to get a 
You want it to warm up here. Brush her up really good, really well. And then make sure we're totally straight. We'll call this a fake normalizing and fine tuning step. I haven't got the, uh, the Wi-Fi down here yet. Hopefully, we can do things like this live sometime. Did a couple of those, but uh, it's nice to have a, a moderator who can talk to you about things. I don't want to go too hot, Shannon. Just sit and stare around for 20 minutes while that cools. Or should I cut you up? I said uncut. Enjoy the fire. Shannon wasn't so lazy. You just forge up another one while I'm cooling. Well, like I said, this is actually my third project today. Although I haven't done the second one yet. I just started. So I don't need to do another one right now. Chances are. Spike knife of steel is so easy to use that time. About another two minutes, I'd be throwing that in the water to cool it. But I'll be back. I'm not going to make you. All I'm, I'm not going to miss anything except for it sitting there. Trust me. I don't want to miss anything. I just move the knife. I don't want to spend 10, 15 minutes over in front of the fan to help speed things up since I got all the things to do. Also, I'll give you a little, again, I don't have things organized yet, so all my belts are hung up there because I'm not sure where the grinder is going to go. And I can't really make that determination until, you see this pile of materials over here I don't mind so much because most of it's going to go to storage, but that pile of lumber and old beams and things, I, I think my welders are going to go on that side, but uh, I, can't, I haven't made that determination, so I can't hang my belts up. But I do have the knife grinder on its own mobile cart. I do not have the buffing wheels and the wire wheel set up yet, but we're working on it. So again, I'm not gonna lie to you, but it's, we're gonna let it set in front of that fan for a while and cool down. All right, it's just cool to the touch. It's ready for grinding. And I'm just gonna, because again, I have wood and everything all over the place, I'm gonna move you back here or something. Give me a final clench bucket, and luckily I need something. Like this. I can put you over there. I think you'll be fine over there. Like I said, you 
want to see it real time with minus what? It's probably 15, 20 minutes of, of uh, let that thing cool down. Let me get you set up somewhere. You're going to want to see something to listen to the blower, but you won't hear the blower in a minute. There you go, let's grind a knife. Um, well, we're just going to clean one up right now, right? So, I need my plate in here. Let's get it rough right now.
and just kind of the flat grind on here uh, trying to get that edge profile equal through this distance anyway but I'm getting really thin down here for heat treating I don't want to do that uh, get the back done I do this this little step here with that bottom wheel puts a wood grain look in that I try to maintain throughout the whole knife and then I cut like I said that little finger that finger groove there works really well um, if I clean up the, the back end I do that so I'm gonna go through one more um, at least one more grit maybe two this, the, the cleaner it is now the less work I'm gonna have once she's hard I'm not sure what kind of grind I'm gonna do on it and for the sake of time I'll just do some secondary stain or something every once in a while like on that side you can see I don't have a full flat grind because they cut a little bit in here I don't know and this one looks good but hey it's not horrible all right I think I don't want to go any thinner than that for the edge uh, so we're gonna do heat treat now let's see we're done the grinder heat treats gonna be right over here oh where are we at I forgot now was it 1021 we started or 11.21. If so, we're almost an hour in. I think it must have been 10 .21. All right, so railroad spike knife by punching water. Stick that blade in, spine down. If I lay it in sideways, the heat from one saddle will put a, a bend into that blade. There's a little door up. There's some heat. Put away 
blade. The tip is kind of thin. Like I said, I get just the spine in. You know, let that spine get up to temperature first, and then I'll worry about bringing the rest up. bringing the rest up. Hopefully we don't end up with a warp. It's hard to warp a railroad spike knife because they're so short and thick. Usually. Alright, so now my whole blade's basically up to temperature. We'll just give that edge a little bit of time. Spine a little time. this, um, let me see what the wire wheel does to it. A lot of times I don't go to the grinder because it just takes so freaking long. Um, for heat treat, all you have to be able to see temperature, you know, color. Oh my gosh, I don't have an extension cord for this guy. I'm trying to get things where they belong, but this just isn't happening yet. So this is not, I don't even have a place to put the end yet. Take a look at it. Yeah, it's almost there, but not quite. So let's go back to the grinder and just see. Again, I just need to see spots, right? I mean, it's all functional time. Shine it up enough so I can see those colors. So that's that. Now, yeah, I forgot. Now I put this five-inch vise in, so I got plenty of heat sink here. I have to run for the, the actual torch, but we'll do this so you can see what it, how long it takes. On the So you 
this. I've never shown you this all the way through. I usually cut. We'll, we'll zoom you in here. Maybe you can see colors happening. Normally I cut this part out. I mean, I start it and then I come back because it takes a long time, but it takes longer to adjust the camera. Yeah, dumbass. side will want not too disappointed in it all right so we're definitely got you know we're dark purple here I still gotta get some browns going down here towards the bottom all right some straw actually is what I'm at right now and I you know I let that thing cook I think I would be happy because it's a nice stiff, stiff blade um, with about what I got 
uh, you know, it's, it's kind of tricky. So you got to kind of play where you want to be. And I'm just letting that soak a little longer. Just a little longer. Normally, I, I don't think I'd, I'd... Actually, I might just do it anyway. I don't... It's confusing me a little bit with color down here. Um, but see, this side isn't confusing me at all. No, I'm good. I'll give this thing a little bit more soaking. Yeah, I can see it. Maybe if I get you a different angle. Yeah. So that spine is nice and blue all the way out. Honestly, out to about here. And then I do what everybody tells me not to do. Maybe that's why I get criticized so much. But I, I call it locking it in. Barely needed to. It was perfect. Barely needed to lock it in. There we go. Tempered and ready to rock and roll. And now we just got to do all the final grinding. So let's go back to the wire wheel here. Because at some point in time, this thing's going to be sharp. So I want this part of the handle cleaned up. All right? So that's what I do next. I used to buff them and all that. I don't do that anymore. Gray on them. What happens with the buffer is that you end up putting too much crap inside the grooves that you go back to the wire wheel anyway, and you end up with this color when you get it. So I can shut that off, although you're not going to hear anything <laughs> anyways. I'm going to have to restart that to finish that other project. All right, here we go. I think, well, what I'm going to end up doing is, I'm, this is 100 grit now, I think I have on there. I'm going to go ahead and just get the blade clean, get this, the pommel, pommel, yeah, I guess, um, up to, you know, 300 grit. I mean, or whatever, whatever level I go to, it might be 200 grit. The pommel I like to have nice and shiny, so it might go a little higher on that. I'll just get the blade cleaned, I get the scale off, and then when everything's happy, I'll go polish this off because, again, I don't like handling the sharp knife on a buffer. Um, then I'll come back and I'll cut whatever, whatever edge. Normally, I do a full flat grind at the top, and I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to do some type of, uh, what you call it, scan grind or something. So, let me get gears. It is kind of noisy. And when I built this, I built two pulleys on the motor so that I can adjust the speed. Because you want to slow and you want to keep it cool.
just this crap right there. You see it? A little bit of scale on that tip. It's already as thin as I want it, and the shit just doesn't want to come off. So there's just a little spot up here that's got some of the 80 grit line. That's all right. I'm going to leave that. I don't mind this. I mean, I mind that it's there, but I could easily grind that out. I don't mind that look on some of my knives. Um, if you notice, this one here, there's a dark spot here, and that's because when I was doing my first grind, I, I got lazy, not lazy, in a hurry. So I gave a little bit more bevel just to try to bite some meat away. But I'm going to end up with, I think, yeah, I think a Scandi there anyway. Or a secondary bevel, whatever the hell it's called. Uh, and I, it'll, it'll eat that away, so I'm okay. So again, getting it cleaned up to the point where you're happy with the 80 grit lines and the 100 grit lines uh, being able to be taken away. Then you start dropping down into to, uh, higher grits. That process goes a lot quicker. That's getting it to here is the, is the hard part. Now we're in the gravy. So that was 100. We'll go down to 220. And again, all I'm trying to do is clean the blade up and the pommel.
fine for the blade, but since I got to go to the tunnel anyway, I'm going to jump up to my 320, whatever it is, 3 something. Ooh, I'm in rough shape. I guess we're going to break out another 320. You're in rough shape. What the hell's going on with my belts? Hopefully she won't bite me. Let's see. They're all going the wrong way anyway. So again, all I'm after is the pommel. I'm trying to get that down so it's, you know, it's impressive looking. Now, on the blade, let's go to this side, it's a little easier to see. Um, the, I have lines still from the 100 grit, even though my 200 is there. I could go to 300 now and, and put a good mirror on this, but I, I got, I'm going to see those lines. I kind of like that look. Um, so the 200 polished over those lines. Um, otherwise, you got go back and you got to go back to the hundred. You got to go back to the two hundred until you're totally clean before you drop to that three hundred. Otherwise, even the smallest blemishes will come out. So I'm going to jump to six on this. We'll go polish that end up, and then we'll put the uh, the edge on. That 600 looks good right now, but not good enough. So let's go. Oh, that's probably be fun. Let me rig up a buffing wheel. Like I said I don't like to frig. Which one do I want to use? Maybe this one. I'm not gonna go crazy with it, just to give you an idea. Oh, something there. Um, crank that down. I gotta find myself a good system. So Haven't found it yet. I don't even know if I have any freaking rouge. How do you like them apples? Where the hell did I put my rouge stuff? That's promising as rouge in there. Oh, yeah, is this green? Anyway. So the best I could get caught 
Go see if you're doing a blade. Just wrapped around, just kind of laying back and just in the face of the chest. I forgot his name, but somebody on the blade making career just doing that. That's it. Now you got a mere finish. And of course, you can go up to white and you can do a lot more with that, but that's all I'm gonna do. That's half. For a railroad spike knife, that's good. So now this knife is done with one exception. And that's the final, the final bevel. Now again, like I said, a lot of times I do a flat grind all the way down, but this, this is gonna be too much work today. I'm not gonna need to do it. But uh, uh, you, you end up just back at the 80 grit usually um, so you don't want to go much thinner than this though um, 80 grit starting here and, and just keep going until you get an edge and then you know keep going that gives you a nice straight line all the way up through here um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do a freehand um, I think it's a Scandi I'm sorry guys yeah, Scandi right is that yeah secondary Typical hunting knife looking kind of thing, rather than a kitchen knife. So, get the Ayokaye, all the way back up to 80 we go, which sucks. Which sucks. And now we really want, we need to watch the temperature, and we're gonna keep that blade.
So again, with a with a regular flat blade, um, I'll use one of my jigs if I was really trying to be careful with it. Uh, with this blade, it's kind of difficult to do that because the, the jig doesn't compensate for this handle. And if you're doing like a full flat grind, when you're on a jig, uh, every time you grind on one side, well, that changes the, the entire angle when you put that on the other side of the, the thing. But anyway, so what I'm going for here is is some type of edge you can see that there centered you right you want to make sure that you stay your plunges are centered and uh, that you know the depth of that is equal to the depth of that now if you notice I got a little bit of a weird thing going on here where it, you know it must have a curve in it or something or I is something with forging or whatever and that's the thing that that I struggle with all the time you know you guys I mean I do I make good knives but I don't make beautiful knives and that's sad but anyway another thing you gotta watch out for I don't know if you can see it or not in the camera but like here I'm well not there yet here I got an edge right um, but it's thicker in here than it is here and here so I gotta even that out I don't know if you can see it or not but alright that's forging alright it was thicker in the blade there or the angle was different there, so that it takes a long time. And again, same as same as just getting the, the finish on the side. Uh, once you get done with this this 80 grit, you can start jumping grits a lot quicker. But I got a little more work to do. Yeah, I just shut you off. Sorry. What's clicking over here? Must be. I was able to work it out so that again I'm not sure what you can see my eyes don't work very well anyway but I got I, you can feel it with your thumb right as you come across so this fat spot here is now gone um, the bevels look okay -ish for me anyway right? they're almost the equal and I am relatively centered a little off on this side actually only because I went to the end. Now see, there's see, there's a little boo boo chain I made. So see, I started that cut, right, Ricasso or whatever you want to call it. I started that cut right on the very edge, and on this one, I didn't. All right. So 
I don't know if I want to go fix that or not. Yeah, I think I will. So that that's what's making it look like it's uncentered. God, I don't want to freak it up. that back but I did freak it up a little bit on angle because uh, without a jig I have a little bit of a smiley there but not bad I'm okay with it all right so now we are almost there we just start jumping up grips jump up your grips tape the tips this knife is almost done two and a half hours so far more than two and a half This one is 
one that I have a, a brown one that I like a lot. And at this grit, I, mean, I don't want to. first, all right? Can you see? Not bad. Not bad. Not as sharp as I like it, though. Piece of paper. Sometimes it takes... Going back a couple of times. Again, no, no honing stone. I mean, I get... Oh shit, yeah, my shoe's sharp. Never mind. My hair was being picky. I, mean, I could go sharper with her, and with a honing stone, absolutely, you know what I mean? But, let me just, uh, let me just put a little more time on it. Because, yeah, what the hell, we got all the time. Awesome, I'll come up to you. Try to get that little foil edge broken off. I don't have good lighting right now. At least you can see it folding back and forth. Now I'll just sit down and finish it once. I used to have a leather straw, but I don't. I'm not 
going to use that. I'll cut my testicles off. But that leather strap, uh, it's just a belt, actually. Um, works well. But she feels good. I just wish she cut hair a little better. Yeah, that changed quite a bit. Well, you can't see it, but it's gone. It's there. And there you have it. I'm going to turn you around so you at least get, get the uh, sign in the background since I picked that up. Yay. Sorry about that window. I'll have to do something about it. Anyway, how about that? So there you have it. Um, one railroad spike knife start to finish. I mean, the only time I had let you go, I just scared myself. I thought for a I forgot to temper it for some reason. Oh boy. The only time I let you go was to, to uh, cool down after uh, the normalization, right? Otherwise, I think, except, you know, I, I shut it off once and turned it right back on by mistake. But uh, you saw the entire process. It is 109, so I'm 11 minutes. Twelve minutes off of two hours. All right, just for a simple knife. And again, I don't know. I mean, I suppose you might be able to get fifty bucks for this thing, um, but it's twenty-five dollars an hour. And it's not a bad hobby, but it ain't gonna feed. It ain't gonna feed everybody. That's for sure. But there it is. Put my mark on it. Maybe first railroad spike knife out of the new shop. Non-stop, uncut, unedited, practically uncut. And it'll be on it. It'll be a long video. I won't have to change. I won't have to do any cuts or anything. So, see, there you are. Hey, seriously, thanks for all your support. We'll try to get more videos out now that you know at least I can work in here. But I still have a lot of work to do uh, to get moved in. And uh, I again thank everybody for um, for backing me morally and financially in a lot of ways. And uh, there it is. Serious, thank you. Ciao. If you found this video uh, helpful, educational, maybe even if you just found it entertaining uh, and you want to support me, you can jump back to my channel. There's a button on the right hand side of the screen called support. And it's kind of like a tip jar. You can go ahead and leave channel a tip for this video and that'll help me make some more. I guarantee. Thanks for your support, as always.